Hey guys, Notch Up with the Machete back with another story for you. So yesterday I asked what the hell do elves and that tomte have to do with Christmas? Well, get yourself a cup of vassal or glug or whatever the hell you're drinking today. Get some eggnog, I'll give you a second. Got it? Okay, good. So it's also one of the reasons why I haven't been doing reviews is the shoulders kind of fucked up. Uh I'll tell you why. It's mostly my job and stuff like that. You know, a bunch of overhead stuff, repetitive movements. But <laughs> in addition, so I was, uh, well, just about three weeks ago, um, called, no, December 11th, um, called to a uh, little private farm, not that far from here, uh, up by the Ukrainian village, which is that way um not that far from elk island national park and uh i got called up there they were the farm was doing uh sleigh rides and santa claus and a whole bunch of other stuff um and they'd been doing it for a few days but all of a sudden one of their guys had gotten really really aggressive and actually had started throwing bales of hay and then the sleigh and then a horse so I got a, I got into my car and booted it. It's not that far of a drive for me, uh, but it does take a, a little while. So anyways, I booted it out there. I grabbed my standard kit. Um, no idea what the hell's going on. Like, uh, like one of Santa's elves is going fucking nuts. What the hell? So booted all the way out there. And I started thinking about um, zombie Santa with the little white worm thing that was in the salmon flesh. Uh, and made a couple of phone calls, found out a little bit about the farm. The farm um, originally was owned by a German family. Uh, then it got passed on to um, a Scandinavian family from, part of the family was from like Gothenburg and part of it was from Amsterdam. So, Scandinavian all over the frickin' place. Anyways, I get there, and sure as shit, all the civvies have been kind of cleared off, but the staff, sorry, my shoulder's still kind of tweaking. Um, the staff are um, kind of standing off to one side, <laughs> and a couple of RCMP officers who are read in walk over to me and ask me, so show them the license, and they bring me over. Now, there's one guy, and he's just pissed. And he's dressed up kind of like an elf. Um, sort of like that. Um, you know, elf hat. Um, green. I don't know why green. Santa wore green at one point. I mean, a hood rather than a hat. But whatever. Um, anyways, <laughs> we go over, and there's this one guy, and he just looks pissed. And he's throwing anything at anyone who gets within, I'd say, about 50 yards from him. So he, he's basically in the middle of the horse paddock uh, with the horses just staying off on the far end by the barn. And you could just tell that they they don't want to be anywhere fucking near him. Anyways, um, get told what happened. And I walk over to this guy and I just start asking him questions. Now, speak English and some French. From Canada, my all of that stuff. I don't speak enough of other languages to really like understand a lot. Um, I can just usually say, I'm sorry, I don't speak your language in whatever language I feel like. Um, but yeah. And I understand shit like Chikai. And uh, when someone says to me, yo, tvoyu mat. I hope your kids aren't nearby, but they really shouldn't be if I'm telling a story to them. Anyways, um, start walking over to this guy, and this string of just, you know you're getting swore at, usually. Um, you know, if, if someone looks at you and, Hev la huit, or, yo dvoyu mat, or nechoy, or whatever, right? Hijo de la puta, anything like that, you usually know you're getting swore at. So, anyways, string of basically expletives comes out of his mouth. And I, I'm trying to talk to him. Like, hey, man, just 
just want to know what's going on here. I've got my um, almost the inner tube strung across me like a bandolier. I've got um, a steel knife on the belt. Um, hang on, I might be able to show you it. Uh, my lap blender knife. Uh, got this one, which is steel, um, on my right side. Um, I've got a longer blade, um, which somebody actually made for me, and it's got like a silver insert on it. It's really cool. Um, it's currently on a high shelf, and I can't reach high right now. Uh, anyways, <laughs> otherwise I show it to you. I got fun stuff around me, but most of it doesn't have to do sweet fuck all with this story. Um, anyways, uh, hands open. I'm walking up to the guy. I think I'm actually, yeah, I'm wearing the same shirt on the A team. <laughs> walking up to the guy, just hands open, toque on because it's fucking cold. Hey, man, how's it going? Then I switched to French. Hey, bonjour, comment ça va? Try the Swedish. Nothing. Switch to a little German. He kind of tweaked a little bit at the Swedish and then a little bit more at the German. And I think he said Hansel Machen, which kind of sounded Yiddish, but um, I looked it up later and it, it has something to do with the story. Um, and he's just, he's hissing at me. Uh, and all I can hear is, and it's, it's a little sing songy like Swedish and kind of like Norwegian. And, and then it just sounds like, someone's farting Finnish swears at me and so I have no idea what's going on <laughs> but I get to the edge of the paddock and I'm just trying to talk to him just trying to talk one of the horses starts running by and he bolts he writes like from the barn right to the other side of me now I'm on the outside of the paddock and the horse just kind of comes here he starts coming towards me and I don't know well okay now I know why but at the time I didn't know why and it pissed off this little dude now this guy is he's not a little person um just i'd say originally like 16 17 years old yeah you know like local kid working doing sleigh rides and stuff like that to earn a little extra christmas money working as one of santa's elves probably one of santa's helpers because the sleigh ride was uh they pretty cool afterwards oh Tasting History gave me a recipe for Vossel, and it's really good. And yes, I'm drinking uh, an ale drink out of my coffee mug, so fuck off, because <laughs> I want to. That's why. Anyways, <clears throat> still sore. Um, it, it gets him pissed off, and he starts bolting towards me. No, 5'6", 5'5", five, 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 slender... Um, but kind of, as he's getting closer to me, kind of looks stockier and looks pissed. Um, basically, imagine a face that's just, get away from my shit. And he storms right towards me and jumps over the fence of the horse paddock. Now, there's an old saying of, you know, uh, keep your fences bull strong, pig tight, and horse high. Well... The fence was fucking up to here. And he just jumps right over it. I'm not even thinking. And he fucking slams into me. Because those last two meters or so, blink done, over the fence. You don't expect someone, like, I couldn't leap over those fences. I mean, I could kind of go sideways over my guess. But I wouldn't leap over those fences. Five feet tall. Anyways, boom. Knocks me on the ground. Starts hitting me. I get my hands up like this real quick because mm, <laughs> I don't like ground and pound. It's pretty much the only thing I can do when I get into a grapple fight. Um, but I don't like getting hit, so cover up like this. Oh, even that. Even that twinges a bit. Anyways, he starts hitting me. Now, the one thing I'm really good at is I'm still pretty flexible, especially for my age. So I actually get my legs up and I can get them onto the top of his head and I just pull him straight down. 
Kathunk gives me just enough time to stand up. I don't really think, but I pull off the rubber, uh, the inner tube, rubber bandolier, I was going to call it. It's actually not a bad name for it, the rubber bandolier. Uh, and I throw it at him, just kind of loop him up. Not a fucking thing. Doesn't do a fucking thing. Trips him up a little bit. So I step back and I pull the long blade from this side and I pull the short blade, this little guy, on this side. And I'm standing there and I'm, I don't know what I'm dealing with. There's not the standard Zed stuff. Uh, there's no indication of rot. Um, he doesn't smell. Um, some dead inhabiting living things smell. Um, they'll smell like sulfur or um, methane, rot, anything like that. Um, viral infections, usually there's something. But other than looking like a pissed off Santa's elf, looks relatively normal. Anyways, charges towards me, don't think, and I bring down the big knife while holding the small knife kind of in reserve. So, boom. Never had this happen before. Um, I think I had it happen once when I tried to chop through a coconut with a big blade. Took. Pretty much bounced off. Then this little hand reaches up and grabs my wrist and twists. And the big knife goes down. And the small knife goes forward. Because at this point, fuck. <laughs> I damn near shit myself. I wasn't wearing the brown pants, but I probably should have been. But, yeah. Oh, that's good awesome. I'm saving some for my wife. She's out getting her last minute stuff. Doing some things. And she might have been joking, but it's entirely possible we're getting Popeyes for Christmas Eve dinner. Which is fine, because I made elk chili yesterday, so. Um, and we're having Christmas Day with her folks and Boxing Day with mine. Anyways, neither here nor there. Back to the story. Anyways, um, the little knife comes forward. And I don't feel a hand come up here. What I do feel is a kick. For those of you who don't know, I... Um, I haven't in a couple of years, pretty much since, you know, COVID and all that kicked in. Um, I was a Muay Thai instructor. Um, I had practiced Muay Thai for, since I was like 18. So I don't want to, I don't want to say how long it's been. It's like, it makes me feel old, older than the gray in my beard does and the baldness. Anyways, um, given my size, given some of the damage that had already been done to my body, when I was training, I often didn't um dodge as much as i probably should have my thing was usually block up and take the impact well that would have worked perfectly fine on someone five six five seven 120 135 pounds maybe because usually it would just bounce off and then i step in and do whatever usually it's the right hand uh, or uh as the kick comes down i like kicking their leg out yeah, there you go. Uh, had to beat me, I guess. Anyways, kicks me so hard on the shoulder, this whole side goes numb. I get pissed. Just pissed. Knife in my hand is now locked up. Basically, I can't move this arm. This shoulder is screaming at me. I do something I never do. I think I've done it twice when I've gotten pissed off. I just grab the fucker by his throat. And I'm holding him like this. I'm like, my shoulder fucking hurts. Porridge. The fuck? And I'm angry. So I, I'm squeezing. I'm not super strong or anything like that. I mean, the, the forearm tennis weapons workouts, all that fun stuff, holding the wrench. Yeah, okay, my grip's relatively strong. Scab, I'm 90% certain your grip's a bit stronger. <laughs> your forearms are like the size of my biceps, easy. Uh, but I'm, I'm squeezing, I'm squeezing just right, because I'm squeezing here, and I'm squeezing porridge. The fuck do you mean porridge? I'm angry, I'm, I lose my eloquence when I'm in pain. 
Uh, I tend to go very quiet, actually, but I'm angry. That kick really fucking hurt. <laughs> I'm holding on to this fucker's throat. Hard. <laughs> and normally, to crush here, not that difficult. To cut off the blood flow, not that difficult. If you grab them like the whole neck like that, okay. Then it depends on the size of their neck and where they're at. But I'm not. I'm Taga Cop. <laughs> eagle. <laughs> Maybe next time we teach him Eagle. <laughs> you get that reference, kudos. Um, I'm still holding this guy's throat. I'm like porridge. Porridge. With a pat of butter. And I start to realize he's speaking English. So I let him go. I'm like, okay, hang on a second. Porridge with a pad of butter. What in the blue fuck are you talking about? Nisa wants porridge and a pad of butter on top. Nisa, you? Nisa. Turn around, I'm like, what's this kid's name? Tommy. He says his name is Nise. Farmer goes, fuck. Farmer's all dressed up like Santa, by the way. Uh, I kind of missed that in the little introduction. Starts walking forward. I turn to him. Nise? He wants porridge with a pat of butter on top. The fuck? The farmer starts speaking. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard, like, Old German or Low Dutch. But he starts speaking in Low Dutch to this Nise. I'm getting none of it. I don't speak any Dutch. It's not Dutch. It's not much. Uh, I don't speak any Dutch. My Swedish is just terrible. Very little Slavic or anything like that. Minimal Germanic. Anyways, Low Dutch is pretty much what the guy was sort of speaking before. Oh, it still hurts. <laughs> so, yeah. I just cracked my teeth and that kind of hurt too. There, we'll finish off the vassal. And that way I won't do it again. Anyways, Nise, as it turns out, is the name of a uh, spirit. Which is currently inhabiting Tommy. Nieces or Tomte are sort of farm spirits. Normally outside my wheelhouse. Thankfully, Farmer Boy starts telling me what's going on. I guess what was a tradition about 100 years ago when that area was kind of settled um, was. And this is, I've sort of gone through it. it turns out it's a thing. <laughs> if, if, if you have Nise, Tomte, um, any sort of Germanic kind of gnome spirit, kind of like brownies and hobs and shit like that. And Hasselmann? Uh, Hasselmann? Hasselmann? German word that I said earlier, which I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm just going to not say it. Um... Yes, apparently they will uh, help you out. <laughs> if you remember to be polite to them. Uh, I guess the standard thing to give them is porridge with a pat of butter on top. I'm getting this from Santa Claus, by the way. He's still dressed up. Red suit, a little bit open. White shirt underneath. Bushy beard. More hair than I have, fucker. <laughs> and he's talking to Nise. Nise? He, he kept saying Nise, so I'm saying Nise. Um, and yeah. He had, about 20 years ago, inherited the farm from his dad, who also used to do the Santa Claus thing. Only people would come, you know, on their own... Um, Slays and stuff like that, skidoos, all of that stuff. And his dad, every night, would lay out a bowl of porridge with a pat of butter on top. 
as kind of a thank you for a good evening. This guy was like uh, three, four days into it, hadn't done it once. So the Tonte, the Nisei, took it a little personal. And apparently those little fuckers are actually really strong. And he threw the horse. Apparently what he really did was he kind of shoved the horse over. Uh, which was it's still kind of impressive. You know, this is going to sound redneck as fuck, but I don't know if you've ever gone cow dipping. Um, which is sort of an urban myth, but I managed to take a bunch of my drunk friends cow tipping once. Uh, I got a lot of money out of them. Uh, because I kept saying that the uh, car kept running out of gas every small town we were going to. Uh, and since it was their idea, they had to fill up the gas tank. I don't know, that one's fucking evil. Uh, but it's not easy to push over livestock that's fully grown. Steer wrestling and stuff like that aside, it's not easy. It's not even easy to push over a steer, truthfully, if they're, you know, standing. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> I guess now this is after afterwards I started talking to the the farmer and I'm not gonna tell you his name I, I don't tell anyone's last name anyways uh, but yeah Tommy started to feel kind of off and the first thing he threw was the first thing nearby he was sitting on a hay bale and he went towards the farmer and the sleigh was in between them well he picked up the sleigh and went like that. Now, I'm not talking like some of you guys have seen um, and been on sleigh rides and stuff like that where it's like the length of a truck. No, this is like a four person sleigh. It's still like 400 pounds. We basically went whoop, <laughs> which startled the horse, which was attached to it, which became unattached by the sleigh tipping over. And a horse comes towards him, he just kind of shoves it over, just trying to get to the farmer. Why in the corral? Apparently, Tomte and Nise, I'm just going to call them Tomte because it's easier for me to say, like animals. They like animals. There's stories of them, you know, helping out animals and stuff like that. But if you disrespect them, yeah. So he was going to where it was comforting. Still pissed off as all fuck, but going to where it was comforting. Horses didn't realize this. They just saw fucking tiny Tommy. Yeah, it would have been better if his name had been Tim, but it was Tommy. So fuck up. Fuck up. So fuck up. Fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> Shut it. Um, anyways, they just seen this tiny little thing, like, fling one of their friends. So, member of their herd. Anyways. <laughs> so the farmer goes inside, makes porridge. Not oatmeal, by the way. Porridge. Straight up porridge. Pat of butter on top. Comes out steaming bowl of porridge. Pat of butter on top. Wooden spoon. Don't know why. Probably just tradition. Hands it to the Tomte. <laughs> Devours the fucking thing. As soon as he's done, Tommy falls the fuck over. Bull hits the ground. Fall. Nobody knows what the fuck happens at this point. Tommy's unconscious. I go over and I check on him. By the way, at this point, my shoulder was just on fire. So, I check his pulse, check his breathing, he's doing okay. Just because... And I felt a little bit salty. Um, uh, hey, open up a small salt pack and have sprinkle it over top of him. <laughs> just in case. Salt does things. <sighs> yeah, it still hurts. Anyways, kid ends up fine. I walk over to Santa Claus. I'm like, you are going to have a sit down with me and go to explain what the fuck just happened. Meantime, RCMP officers have called in uh, a couple of EMTs. Thankfully, they didn't call stars because holy shit. I'm fairly certain government would have wouldn't have covered that for me. It's like five thousand dollars easy. Um, anyways, <laughs> EMTs come, one for him. One for me. The RCMP officers talk with the uh, the farmer. Still dressed as Santa, by the way. We get the whole story. You know, the inheritance. What a tomte is. 
da 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 da. Guy literally, I shit you not, pulls out Google. <laughs> He's like, this, this. And normally, like, the pictures of these things are, uh, let's see. Heiselmann. They're like little tiny. Right? Like, those are tomte. Little tiny things. Strong as hell. Spirit. So, took over Tommy. Holy fuck. Dealt with many things. <laughs> that was a new one. Definitely normally outside of my wheelhouse, but what the fuck? Hop in the ambulance, get taken to University Hospital. They do an ultrasound and an MRI. Now, my shoulders were already kind of iffy. But, uh, yeah, acute bursitis. <laughs> I had chronic bursitis before. Not super bad. Bad enough. It hurt. Yeah, acute bursitis. Enough that that night, cortisone injection. Woo-wee! So, we're a few days past that, obviously. Um, and... <laughs> It's it's healing. <laughs> the the rule, the takeaway, the don't get kicked by a fucking tomte. I know some storytellers and stuff like that will make fun of gnomes and shit, but Jesus Christ, brownies will fuck with you, tomte will fuck with you, Nisa will fuck with you. The fact that he took over Santa's elves is just funny as hell, like. Not really a dick move. Didn't really have anything to do with Christmas, other than the fact that, you know, this was a tradition that his dad had and all this shit. Yeah. I don't know. It's just one of those weird fucking things that I got to do every once in a while. So, But. It was a nice farm. And if you ever get a chance actually to go to the Ukrainian village when it's operating, I think they do a winter thing. Didn't really have a chance to check it out, what with, you know, being in pain. <laughs> um, it's it's a cool place to visit. Uh, the Vegreville's the other direction. No. Ish. Vegreville's further down, and they've got the world's largest um, Sanka uh, Easter egg. Uh, Ukrainian Easter egg. And also really, really, really good. Um, cool stuff. That's it. Just remember, Canada's great. Except for the zombies and the occasional pissed off Tomte. Nisei. Hazelman. Zombies. <laughs>